Okay, so I'm going to continue and try to fit this model first, followed by this one. As you see, this model he has two exogenous variables, exo1, exo2, exo1 and 2, and one endogenous variable, which is here. Both exogenous variables exert an influence on the endogenous variable, as represented by the one-headed arrow, as you see here. How do we create this model in Jamovi? So I've already done this before. Uh, the previous model, which I showed you in the previous video, the second, the first part of this video, um, had two endogenous variables. Now I, I have uh, basically changed the parameters in some, house, in some way. Uh, so I removed the first uh, latent endogenous variable, uh, or this, the second one, and I have included um, three variables, y2, y3, y4, under endo uh, endogenous one. Okay, and as I mentioned before, you can basically change this name to anything you like. For example, factor one, factor two, just type in anything you like to, you like to have. And if you want to add more endogenous variables, click on add latent variables and add the name here, and then uh, include the variables that are necessary to, you know, to indicate or to represent endogenous two. I'm going to remove this because I don't have any variables left there. So you can just drag and drop, as I mentioned before. <clears throat> Next is uh, the latent exogenous variables. I have created two latent exogenous variables, two and one and two. The first one is represented by x2 and x3. Okay, and again, I dragged and dropped it here. I've already done so, just to rep to demonstrate how you can do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same thing again. So for exogenous two, I have got x1 and y1 to indicate or to represent exogenous 2. And then again, you can simply drag and drop x1 here. Since it's already there, nothing happens. So just want to you know, demonstrate how you can do it. And y1 into the box as well. Now, uh, so far, we have told uh, Jamovi that you've got exogenous 2 to have an influence on this and exogenous 1 to have an, an influence on endogenous as I mentioned before. I quickly scroll down to the um, shape or the path diagram because you know getting to, uh, having a look at the visual representation is also always very helpful. So I have those variables in place and those relationships are indicated by those one-headed arrows. Now, if you like to change these parameters into the standardized parameters, you can scroll down and change this to, um, well, this, these are coefficients. Coefficients are the non-standardized ones. So let's wait for it. Yeah, these are non-standardized ones and betas are standardized ones. So they are supposed to be below zero, uh, below one or equal to one in some cases, but they shouldn't be larger than one. If you are have variables that are larger than one, which is unfortunately the case here, it indicates that you have a Haywood case, as I mentioned in the previous video. And this indicates that there is a problem in your model. And of course, I already know what the model, what the problem is. Is that one of the, uh, there are two uh, problems. One is that uh, there is a relatively um, considerable uh, correlation between the residuals of Y4 and Y2. That's one. And of course, I can take care of that. I'll show you how to do that. But another problem is that X1 uh, has got a negative uh, relationship within the, the variable, the exogenous variable too, and that's a bigger problem. Now, this should be reverse coded as I mentioned before. Now, uh, I can first take care of the correlation between y4 and y2, the residuals. What I can do is to go to variances and covariances and Covary y4 with y2, and this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, I select a pair y2 and y4 and move this to the right hand side. 
this will partially address the problem of the model. Um, let's wait for this uh, path diagram to appear again. Okay, so as you see, this uh, uh, these parameters suddenly improved significantly. It it just went down from around eight to one point thirty two, and this one from seven to minus zero point thirty three thirty three, which is uh, a big um, improvement in our model estimate. So that's one of the things you can do. The next one, the next thing that I want to show you to do is, of course, we have to go through those uh, fit statistics. The first thing, the good news for us is that the user model has got a non-significant p-value when it comes to the chi-squared index. The TLI is pretty good. The SRMR is also good. Um, RMSEA is just on the borderline. I would have liked to see an R RMSEA index smaller than 0 0.8. Uh, 0 point, uh, smaller than 0 0.06 would be much better. Uh, sorry, I said 0 0.8. That, that was a mistake. 0 0.08, I should say. So it's just on the borderline. Now, if it were 0 0.06 or smaller than that, it would have been better. The closer it gets to 0, the better our model is. And it also falls between the lower and upper boundaries of RMSEA 95% uh, confidence interval, which is another good piece of news for us. Um, the relationship between endogenous variables are uh, shown here. The estimates, which are non-standardized estimates, and the beta, which is the standardized estimates, are, are here. And the p-values are not significant. So. Okay, so we can keep that in mind, uh, which means that in this model, uh, there are no uh, relationships between those latent variables that we have uh, created. Okay, so this is the model that I was talking about, and the TLI, CFI, etc. are here, and they're, they're, they all look good, really. Okay, but it could still be improved if we could get rid of that uh, variable. And again, I think you can easily do that if you have got um, a few minutes and, and you can spare a few minutes and do a reverse coding quickly on the variable. Uh, okay, now let's uh, go to, so I have already fit this, let's go to the last model in which uh, you see there is a more um, complicated relationship between the variables. Let me zoom in a little bit to show you what I mean. Exogenous variable 2 uh, predicts endogenous variable. Okay, that makes sense. That's easy to understand. Now, exogenous variable 2 also predicts or exerts an influence on um, exogenous 1, and exogenous 1 predicts or exerts an influence on exogenous uh, in, on endogenous 1. This is a bit more complex. So we need to put in a code, otherwise it will not be possible for us to uh, create this relationship. And here, we want to uh, command uh, Jamovi to uh, create this relationship in which exogenous 1 is predicted, this tilde sign is, is read as is predicted by or is caused by exogenous 2. Okay, so I'm going to copy this and um, I am going to a section where I can include it. Where is that? Um, custom model setting. Okay, I click on custom model setting, click on add directive here, and just copy and paste what I already mentioned. Now, how, how do you find out what to include here? It's actually very easy to figure out these kind of definitions and, uh, you know, relationships. You scroll up a little bit, and in your model, you will see these. Okay, so based on the language that you see here, it's very easy to define new parameters. Don't don't be uh, afraid of making mistakes. The worst thing that can happen is that you'll get an error message, and you can keep continue. Uh, you can continue doing, uh, you know, uh, new parameter estimations and, and creating new models. Uh, for example, endogenous one equals um, tilde y2 plus y3 plus y4. So this is basically uh, the first one, endogenous, 
endogenous one, this one. Uh, and these are the variables that are specified in the code. So take some time to go through this language. It's really very straightforward. Uh, I, I'm sure you can figure out how it works just in a few in a matter of few minutes. Now, so now exogenous variable is predict one is also predicted by exogenous two. And I'm gonna scroll down to the model and this is the model. So exo two affects exo one. In other words, exo one is predicted by exo two. And indo endogenous one is predicted not only by exogenous one but also by exogenous two. So this is like a triangle relationship. Uh, to explain it further and to make it more um, fathomable, uh, here is another way of putting it. Endogenous variable receives a direct uh, influence uh, from exogenous one and the direct influence is captured by this one-headed arrow. And it, it also receives a direct influence from exogenous two, and this uh, direct uh, influence is captured by this arrow right here. But in addition to these direct relationship, relationships, there is an indirect influence from exogenous two through exogenous one on exogenous on endogenous one. So it's like this way, this way, and this way. So this is an indirect path. Long story short, endogenous one variable receives an indirect uh, influence from number two through number one. And that's what our model basically means. Now, I think that's more or less everything. Just keep in mind that although I have chosen beta coefficients, these beta coefficients are larger than one, this and this are larger than one. This is a, a Haywood case, as they call it. And in order to solve the problem, again, I reiterate that it, uh, we should solve the problem of the reliability statistic here. And that's by reverse coding the variable that I mentioned before. I hope you will find these two videos useful. If you have any questions or any concerns, please leave them. Uh, in the description section or the comment section of this video and I look forward to present more videos on SEM especially the multi-group analysis in future. Thank you very much and have a great day.